Hello everyone, this is B Harper from Supermaster.com and welcome back to another review. Alright, so first thing is first, to those of you who are curious and a little bit concerned, I am st still going to do the DC comic book universe animated uh, movies, uh, please don't worry, I have not forgotten about those. But today I just wanted to do a movie review or a slash analysis if you will, completely off the cuff. And it is something that I've been thinking about doing for quite some time now, and that is the John Carpenter America Trilogy. What is the America tri Trilogy? Well, to me, and this is unofficial by the way, the America Trilogy is not an official term given to these films directed by the one and only John Carpenter, but they are Escape from New York, They Live, and Escape from LA. And as it turns out, there are two really, really great directorial John Carpenters that I love. One is John Carpenter who has been given creative control with very little to no studio interference. The second is a pissed off John Carpenter. And this is the John Carpenter who wants to make a statement. And Escape from New York, which is going to be the, the topic of this video today, is absolutely no exception. Now, I don't know too much about the political climate back in 1981, but I would assume this was a time of which power was still very much a nebulous prospect for the American people. Namely, I believe, Ronald Reagan was still in charge around about this time, and look, I, I have no personal thoughts about Ronald Reagan myself, but I do understand that the way he governed his country was not particularly ideal, especially if you're just like a regular American person. So in response to this, Carpenter made Escape from New York and rather than just strictly being content on making it um, a low budget sci-fi action type of film, there's a huge political commentary behind it. And what I like especially is that he doesn't necessarily name names because one, he probably would have got himself into a lot of trouble if he did, but two, it was, he was able to give you very basic clues about what he was talking about and who he was talking about. So for example, the very impotent and completely ineffectual uh, president played by Donald Pleasant was obviously Ronald Reagan. Meanwhile, the whole notion about this prison that New York has been made into and therefore, you know, sort of separating it from the world, that is more or less how the people probably felt. They felt that they could not trust Reagan, so therefore they had to sort of build their own type of governing society. And in this case, there are three uh, type of schools of thought at work. One, you have the government, and that is headlined, of course, by Pleasance's character, as well as Lee Van Cleef's character, um, Hulk, or Hulk, however you want to pronounce it. They are all about order and keeping a sense of balance in the community, making sure that the authorities stay in power, and basically knocking back anyone who dares to challenge it. The second school of thought is represented by the King of New York, played by Isaac Hayes, and the, here's, here's the thing. All these prisoners have been tossed into this prison and forgotten about. And rather than sort of fight among themselves, for the most part, they've actually built up their own type of society. And it's just got to that point of which, you know, nobody even thinks about breaking out because why would you? If you are just living the high life in this prison and people are bowing to you and being afraid of you, why would you want to move out? Why would you want to break out of this prison when, you know, you got a pretty damn good here? So the King of New York is more or less, more or less the, um, you know, he's the anarchist. He is the, the true anarchist who doesn't give a fig about law and order. He's living life by his own rules and, you know, might is right. Okay, he has this military force and he is governing it with the most iron of fists. And thirdly and finally, you have the character of Snake Plissken, played by, of course, Kurt Russell with his eye patch. And Snake is a self self involved anarchist. He doesn't follow anybody. He doesn't follow the US government. He doesn't abide by any sort of code given to him by some sort of criminal overlord. He works in his own interests. He doesn't care about anything else. And it is because of this that our Hulk, or Hoke, I'm sorry, I keep on getting tongue-tied on his, on his name. Uh, Hulk actually 
employs Snake because of the fact that Snake doesn't have any sort of alliance. So he can't go in there and, and pledge loyalty to anybody because that's not the way Snake thinks. And the only way to get Snake to play ball is to put his life into jeopardy, i.e. being the uh, destructive nanites in his body. So all of you basically know the, uh, the plot premise of this film by now, so I won't bother to go into those details. But it really does stand to reason that this is a hugely political movie, but it's not done in a, shall we say, on the nose type of thing. Well, I guess you could say it's on the nose, but it's done with a huge amount of fun to it. And that is mainly because of all these character actors in this film. Kurt Russell, Lee Van Cleef, Donald Pleasance, Isaac Hayes, Adrian Barbeau, Harry Dean Stanton, uh, Ernest Borgnine. You have all these really likeable actors. And that's another thing. Barbeau, Stanton, Stanton and um, Borgnine, they play inmates inside of the prison. And I think that they somewhat represent the everyday people. They are the American people during the governance of uh, Ronald Reagan. OK, they're, they're not they're not bad people. I mean, they're in a pretty horrid situation, but they have their own sense of duty and they have a sense of loyalty amongst each other and they try to help each other out. And I just really do like that, despite the, the fact that this film is very pessimistic, let's not be around the bush here, Snake Plissken is not a hero. Okay, in one scene, he sees a woman who is being attacked in a hallway, and rather than stepping to this woman's defense and holding these attackers off, he just watches them for a couple of seconds and he just keeps on going. Okay, Snake Plissken is not a good guy. He works in his own self-interests. And that's what I feel what truly elevates the character of Snake. He's an asshole, as he calls himself. <laughs> that the, um, the, the, there's a quote in the movie in which um, uh, a woman who is around Snake says, you know, are you a cop? Snake says, I'm just an asshole. You know, <laughs> this is, it's true. Snake Plissken is an asshole. And he makes no apologies for who he is. And this whole experience doesn't necessarily change his point of view about any sort of political faction. But upon the deaths of his uh, his friends, played by Barbeau, Borgnine and um, Harry Dean Stanton, he comes to understand that there are people out there who are... Who are the little people? They are the ones who truly do make a country revolve. And when Donald Pleasance's uh, president doesn't pay them any sort of attention whatsoever, like he doesn't even bother to, you know, honor their memory because they actually helped him get out of the prison and escape uh, the King of New York. But does he say a thing about them? No, he doesn't. So Snake Plissken actually you know, honours their memory by making the president look like a fool on national television. <laughs> and uh, it all just comes back down to the fact that even though we don't necessarily have faith in established in a, um, an established political system, we can still find faith within each other. We can still have each other to hang on to and interact with and learn from. And yeah, even though this is a, definitely an angry movie, there there is still a sense of hope and optimism, as somewhat veiled as it may be. Um, that's the most interesting thing about this film to me. It's just the fact that this is a huge political statement made by a very angry and very talented director. Yes, it's low budget. Yes, it's a B movie. But since when, since when was a B movie ever a bad thing? When you think about it, every single genre film that you can think of is a B movie. Alien, directed by Ridley Scott, that is such a B-movie on paper, but it was elevated by the fact it had a good bunch of people working behind it. Um, the God first Godzilla movie, that was probably originally seen as just another sort of monster movie, but in fact, it was a political and sociological statement about discouraging the use of nuclear weapons. It's really fascinating how films that are often sort of seen as genre and B and blah blah blah, you know, the ones that are sort of like looked down upon and disdainfully, they're often the ones with something incredibly powerful to say. And Escape from New York is absolutely no exception. Granted, there are a couple of dated elements about this movie. I mean, namely, yes, the whole sort of political thing does show its age, simply because we don't live in 1981 anymore. But 
the message is still very loud and clear when it comes to how the people react in any sort of given circumstance. So I would give Escape from New York a four out of five. It's it's it doesn't quite um, visually hold up as much as it probably would have, but what matters is the message. What matters are the characters. And even though these characters may be stock in some regards, they serve a higher form and purpose. And you've got it to yourself a really good bunch of actors to sort of give them that life. I mean, uh, quite frankly, I, I love Ernest Borgnine's sort of cabby character. He's, he's like the guy who sort of links everything what's going on in New York at the moment, but he's a very sort of happy-go-lucky type of guy. He doesn't ally himself with anybody. He just... Well, he doesn't ally himself with any of the big powers. He's his own man, but he has friends that he loves and he likes to take care of. And it's it's really, really sweet. So, yeah, that's my rating on Escape from New York. And I'm really sorry if this uh, video feels all sort of slapdash together, because quite frankly, it is. I have absolutely no big notes to sort of um, uh, refer to. So this was something that I spoke from from the heart. And... Were I be able to just go at length about this movie, properly prepared and given more time in my YouTube video right here, I definitely would. It's one of those films that you can go back and look at on various levels. It's, it's one that encourages um, dialogue. You know, um, I wouldn't be surprised if this film is being used a lot, in not just in film school, but a sociology type of classes. And yes, it is an extreme type of film in terms of what it's trying to say, but at the core, this is the stuff that truly matters to us. And Escape from New York is just, it's so packed of really neat stuff. And once again, it just proves that a pissed off John Carpenter is a great John Carpenter. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much, guys. And as usual, I shall see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.